Hey guys, got a, another unboxing to show you um, out of my stash series. Uh, it's a Ming 135th Stegosaurus series, uh, kit numbers SS008, and it's an Israeli heavy armoured personnel carrier. Uh, I think it says an Axarot. Oh, never really sort of worked out what the thing says, but it's a late version. Okay, this is a full interior build. Um, another great piece of box art by Ming. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see there is a cutaway of showing the interior as well. So you do know it's going to be an interior build. So um, left and right side, short sides of the boxes, just the cover on the top. Okay, but the bottom, you can see there's uh, just a diagram <clears throat> or a coloured diagram of the third vehicle of the second platoon infantry training centre. Okay. Uh, Negev Desert July 2011 okay so it's a pretty good picture to show you um, front and rear and side profiles of the vehicle okay and on the top there is a, another cutaway of the interior colors and what the vehicle looks like inside and um, just some kit information there and just some um, information on the vehicle itself, okay. And it is a 2014 kit, so 2017, now it's three years old. All right, so I did get this kit second hand. Cannot remember what I paid for it, probably around the 40 to $50 mark. That's what I generally sort of aim for with my kits. If it's sort of over that, I tend not to buy them because it's like they're almost full retail, getting to the war the full retail costs. So that's on the back of the box there is nothing okay and also before i keep going um there is um a little logo here desert eagle publishing okay got this to go with it all right so this is the desert eagle publishing axarit heavy apc um i did buy this at for 42 dollars at last year's um ipms px sale uh by ronald hobbies ronald's hobbies um beautiful book but I won't show you now. This will be a uh, flicking through the page review or just on its own. So if you do want to see what's inside this book, I will save that for another video, guys. So like I said, if you want to see the review or what's have a quick look inside the book, um, leave comments down below, and I'll be more than happy to do that for you guys. But um, yeah, okay, so that's the book there. All right, so let's crack the box open. All right, so instructions. And we'll have the instructions first quickly before I show you the rest of the um, rest of the kit. Okay, tiny little book. Okay, it's not a big book. Um, you know, there's a pair of um, Xeron cutters there. You know, you can see there it's not a very big book at all. Okay, so hopefully, in theory, it's not going to be a big, big build. Okay, so multi language on um, on the vehicle itself on the pages one and two. Page three is in another language, okay, and then page four, we've got some basic, um, just some basic stuff here, like what kind of tools you're going to need, um, a little, probably in multi-language as well, in here, and, do, 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 do. okay, so basically just saying, just have a read through the book and just make sure you understand everything before you commence building, okay, so step one, um, we've got wheels, lower hole and suspension swing arms and steps one and two and the thing I love about Ming instructions is um, it's just like everything's every step is labeled so you know what's happening here so we've got wheels wheel assembly attaching chassis parts step three is attaching wheels attaching interior floor and etc etc so and everything's labeled everything from the drive sprockets um, no road wheels, so you know it helps with the terminology of the vehicles too. So if you're like me and really don't know much about the vehicles, you know Ming um, adds this into the instructions, so it sort of gives you an idea on what the parts are called. So that helps out a lot, okay. But you can see, like every step isn't really that busy, okay. So step four, we've got uh, attaching interior floor, okay. So so there is going to be um, painting involved, like a paint build, paint build in multi, like at separate stages. It's not just going to be a build it all in one hit and then paint it, um, like most exterior models um, that we do. 
Okay, so we got all the seats. There are quite a few seats in here because this is an armoured personnel carrier. It does have a few seats in this vehicle. Uh, we got it just says attaching interior parts. So we've got like things like fire extinguishers, attaching the seats and all that. We've got dials on here, the decals I think. And that's another part with decals. Okay, so no, attaching the seats here again, attaching interior, interior parts part two. Okay, so we've got some bench seats here. Alright, so our step eight, step nine, we have inside wall assembly. So we've got things like steering wheels, um, just some accessories to go inside the wall. And then we've got the main the main interior wall going on there as well in step ten. Step eleven, whole parts assembly. Okay, so haven't really looked at this kit like in detail so it, this will be a good opportunity to show you guys i have cracked open the box and you know obviously as we all do when we first get new kits we crack the box open and have a look see what's inside but really never really sort of looked at the thing sprue by sprue okay so touching periscopes with 14 okay so we have lots of um peris periscope parts and then we've got the hatch hatch cover assembly okay so whether these are so the by the looks of things guys where it says do not glue down here um, I think by well, looks of these patches will be workable, so this game is pretty cool. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you are when you when you if you do ever get this kit or you do have it, just keep in mind that some of these parts are workable. Okay, so we've got touching the chassis to the to main to the upper um, upper hole. Okay, so we've got the rear door. Okay, so the rear door is also workable, as it says here. Do not glue. All right, so that's pretty cool. So there's going to be lots of weathering opportunities for the stair, um, the ramp here as well, like mud, dirt, sand, whatever, you know, whatever theatre you put the sink vehicle in. Uh, step 18 is attaching external devices, okay, so so we've got all these things, whatever they are, like some kind, obviously sensors of some kind. And they've got smoke grenade launchers and light assembly, okay, so we've got a few of those there. Attaching remote control machine gun. Alright, so this is pretty cool. Something different um, compared to like you know the German World War II stuff we normally build. I thought I'd get this one. Attaching towing hooks. Alright, so you can also hear the D shackle says do not glue, so that's swinging freely. And then we get some photo wedge to go in there as well. I think W means photo wedge um, on the main kits. Um, pretty sure it is, yeah. So whenever you see a W, um, that, that's PE. Okay, so, and then finally on step 22, we've got all the things like the jerry cans, we've got more machine guns to assemble. We do have um, string, I think they give you string in this one, cord. So, you see on the side of the page here, you've got a 1 to 1 scale of 155 mils, so that's your length that they want you to cut out the cord. At the right length, uh, so it fits on the um, finished model. Okay, so we got some more PE finally just to finish off the model. And then we got sprue map on page 16 and 17. And on the very back covers, we have painting and marking details um, to go on there. So this is the second platoon, um, fourth Dalek Company, first battalion. Uh, desert combine maneuvering exercise January 2009 so we've got a B and there's all the different ones Gaza Strip September 2013 third platoon and then C and D so we do have four versions of this or not four marking options um, so you've got fourth platoon uh, Gaza Strip April 2000 or well it says 201 so probably means 2011 I'm not too sure just a bit of a typo there on the end they're just missing a one and the third vehicle for D, um, third vehicle of the 2nd Platoon Infantry Training Centre, Desert, um, Negev Desert, July 2011. And finally, just the colour reference that they give you here. Um, they are saying Vallejo paints, okay, but they are in English here. Gun metal, translucent red, translucent blue, red, black, white, hemp, aluminum or aluminium, depends on how you say it. They most of my viewers are Americans. And, and black metallic, so metallic black, okay, so that'd probably be for the tracks, I'd say. But that's the instruction book, okay, so a bit of nine, ten minutes there waffling for the instructions. Alright, and we got some decals, 
and there's that piece of string that they talk about in the instructions so you definitely get more than 155 mils of cord so you will have some left over and then the P-ish fret underneath and I wish I could open these up but I just don't really want to open this bag up because I know this stuff's going to fall out and fly everywhere but um, the PE, um, if you have used, if you haven't used Ming PE before, it's actually really nice to work with. Uh, I don't find it too thick and it's not too thin. Um, you know, it's it's for me, in my opinion, I think it's just it's really nice to work with. So you get that in one bag, okay? So they are resealable, okay? Except for the main bag, it's a heat heat sealed bag. And the main hole, okay, so you can see once again, they'll always like to point out that the, there is details underneath the, okay, so it hatches, got some, um, where the axles would go through, okay, and we've got details on the side, but looking plain, but, um, you know, always you're going to be putting details on top of that and sprucing it up, and the upper main surface and inside you can see it there are poly caps um, inside there okay so just just checking the rank and then we've got some really nice details on the top here okay so we've got some grill details unfortunately they're not see-through they're just recessed um, panel lines in there and same on the back as well they're just very deep so we've got some fuel cap covers and just service hatches as well and just a bit of sprue that's in there just to um, I don't know what that's there for, but it's there and you're going to have to cut it out. Okay, and then all the rivet detail on the side is really, really nice. Okay, so I'll show you there. As you can see, just the detail is just really, really gorgeous on this thing. Right. And then Spru C. Okay, so we've got, you can see that the checker plate detail on this is really nice as well. And as Ming always does, really crisp details, and it looks like, well, thought that was broken, but it's not, because there's no missing parts floating around there, so, I don't know, I hope it's not a mismold, but I don't think it is. Okay, so we've got some, it uh, looks like the basket on the back, it does, so that piece there is actually the cage that runs on the back of the vehicle, okay. So that's very nicely done. That's sprue C. Sprue E. Okay, so we've got some hatches. There, the machine guns, jerry cans, a fire extinguisher. Got some lights, and they've already got the covers on them, so you don't have to screw around with PE or extra parts just to put the light covers on there. And they might be the remote sensors, actually. Who knows what they are? Um, no, they're the light covers. You can see them on the front of the vehicle on here where my thumb is. So that's that. But just all these tiny little fiddly details um, to cut off and re to remove. But that's the sprue there if you want to have a bit of a look see. And then looks like these look like the interior walls. Um, so we've got some cabling that runs inside, some switch, switch boxes, and all that sort of goodness. Same with on the other side. You can see that how crisp the detail is on this model. So if you love weathering as much as I do, you're gonna have a field day with this. Um, and then these parts here are pretty plain. And then this one here is quite nice as well. But this one just stands out the most, just how sharp, how sharp the detail is. And there's no flash on this at all, guys. Like it's um. And once again, Ming's done a really good job on the molds. Okay, and then we got a fairly big sprue here. We've got all the road wheels. Got some looks like spare track links. Uh, dry sprocket. Okay, dry sprockets are pretty plain on the inside. Okay, this is the inside of the dry sprocket that attaches to the main hole itself. But the outside part is actually nicely detailed. And you've got the tow rope cables here, cable ends. And looks like I don't know what they are, but they're interior parts, I dare say. They're in two halves, got some nice D-shackles here. And it looks like these are the seat seat backs on here. Okay. But the road wheels. Um, I have seen better by Ming. Um, like seriously, like but I think you know just the way these might be the insides, they might join two together. So one might be 
So that's the inside, and that's the, or that's the inside edge um, of the wheel, and that's the outside. So obviously these will be gluing together, so sorry, my mistake. So they don't really need to be detailed at all, didn't realise. Alright, and then here it looks like we got some uh, road tie or rubber tyres that you have to slip on extra, which is cool, which, which is really good because you want to paint them separately without, if you don't have any masking templates or anything, you can just clean them up, spray them, and then glue them on that way. Okay, so that's, I don't know, I don't, that's a good idea though, I don't mind that. Alright, so... Screw H, okay, so we got some, looks like some kind of chain detail, and all these fiddly little details here, I'm not too sure, that looks like some kind of hatch, either that, or that's the sensor on top, um, sensor pot on top, my dude is too, that's the sensor pot on top, and, alright, so there you go, that's a sprue H, sprue J, Okay, white sprue, so this would be interior, I reckon. Alright, so we've got some, don't know what they are, they're obviously storage, in storage um, compartments of some sort. Alright, um, but all were revealed in the, re in the flipping through the pa pages of that reference book by Desert Eagle Publishing. Okay, so checker plate details quite nice on the floor. quite nice so that's sprue J right, so a few bags here we've got sprue A these are duplicates all right so looks like these are the idler, idler wheels we've got the suspension um, swing arms some hatches and then we've got the front for the drive sprocket Tiny little grab handles, okay, here, so whether you want to make your own out of wire, it's up to you, I probably will. Uh, I've got some tow hooks, and some more tow cable ends, alright, so there, that's a duplicate sprue. There's even really nice interior details on the hatch here, if you can see, if the camera wants to show you and behave itself, so that's sprue A. And then finally... We have Nang Indie Link tracks. Okay, so what have we got here? We have six sprues, and they're all identical because they're all track links. But there's only two clip off points, and where you've got to clip them off is yeah. There's going to be a bit of a clean up because obviously that's you've also got to insert that on the other end. So the male end of the link has to go on the female end. So you have to clean that up, otherwise they're not going to fit in. So if I show you the back edge of the, of the tracks, you can see where they insert in there. Alright. Right, guys. That is the box empty. Okay, I've stripped everything out of the box to show you. So that is the Meng Axarit um, full interior um, personnel carrier. Thanks for watching guys, um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the sub button, it'd be muchly appreciated, um, show your support, and if you like or dislike this video, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it's not going to hurt my feelings, it just helps me to show what you guys want to watch and what you don't want to watch, okay, so, um, if you, thanks for watching, have a great day guys, and I'll catch you in the next video, see ya, bye bye.